Hi, I'm Alan Stahl, a Senior Principal Scientist here at BD Biosciences. Have you noticed that sometimes the compensation of your panel seems to be off? This is probably due to the controls that you used. Here are some tips to help you get the best compensation for your experiments. In previous videos, we've seen how compensation is the process by which we subtract background due to fluorescent spillover. To perform this compensation, you must run single color controls. The cytometer software then uses these controls to create a matrix of spillover values and corrects for the background due to spillover. Small errors in calculating spillover values can have major impact on the quality of multicolor assays. In this example, the spillover values were only off by 1%, but this was enough to dramatically impact data quality and interpretation. Single color controls typically come in two forms, stained cells or antibody capture beads, also called compensation particles, such as the BD bead compensation particle. Each has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of using cells is that this is the closest to the true biological spillover conditions and will give the most accurate values. When using cells, it is important to run the compensation controls under the exact same conditions as your experiment, including activation, cultivation, special buffers, or fixation permeabilization conditions. The disadvantage of using cells is that you may have to use a precious biological sample. Also, there may be very few positive cells expressing the antigen, but the antigen density may be very low. In both cases, it can be hard to accurately measure the spillover value. When using cells is not practical, antibody capture beads can be used as a valid alternative for most fluorochromes. BD comp bead compensation particles, for example, are coated with anti-immunoglobulin that can bind most fluorescent conjugated antibodies, acting as a surrogate for stained cells. The advantage of BD comp beads is that you don't have to use precious samples and the positive population is abundant and clearly separated. The beads work with most of the available fluorochromes. However, it is important to note that for some fluorochromes, the spillover values on beads can be significantly different from similarly stained cells. So, when using a new reagent, it's always best to first test the reagent with both cells and bead controls to make sure that the bead controls give accurate spillover values equivalent to cells. Irrespective of the type of control you employ, Correctly selecting and using single color controls is critical for getting accurate spillover values and correct compensation. Here are three major principles for good compensation controls. First, the fluorescent spectrum of the compensation control reagent must be identical to the reagent used in the experiment. Even similar fluorochromes such as FITSI and Alexa 488 seen here have slightly different emission spectra, which leads to different spillover values. As shown in this example, this means that FITSI spillover values are appropriate for the FITSI dye, while using the Alexa Fluor 488 spillover values will lead to undercompensation for that same reagent. Here are some other dyes that are read in the same detector and are commonly but incorrectly mismatched as compensation controls. The second related principle pertains to tandem dyes, such as PE Psi 7 and APC Psi 7, for which spillover properties may change when the same tandem dye is conjugated to different markers. In this example, the spillover values calculated using the CD3 APC Psi 7 single stain control are not accurate for the CD8 or CD4 APC Psi 7. In these cases, it's important to use reagent specific compensation controls as shown in the right column. Similarly, when different lots of the tandem dye are conjugated to the same marker, you can also have different spillover values. In these cases, lot-specific controls should be used to accurately calculate compensation. The last principle requires that the positive population is as bright as possible while being still on scale. If you are using cells stained with a reagent with a broad range of fluorescence, as shown here with CD45RA, Gate on the bright population, as shown in red, as your positive population. Errors in the spillover calculated from using dimmer cells are magnified at higher MFI. Correct compensation is best achieved when spillover values are calculated from the brightest population. In summary, 
Accurately calculating spillover values of your reagents used in your multicolor assay is critical to the quality of the data from that assay. We have reviewed major sources of compensation errors. Be aware that other factors could also further impact compensation accuracy. By following the tips, tricks, and principles described here, you can maximize the overall quality of your multicolor assay. For more information about compensation or about the products featured on this video, please visit bdbiosciences.com.